Hello and welcome back. I'm Michael. This is Michael's back porch and these are what we call the back porch tapes. And today I want to talk a little bit about haters. Do you have haters? Do you have haters on social media? Maybe on Facebook? Maybe here on YouTube? Do you have people that just blast your videos with hate? I'm going to talk about that today. Do people really hate you? Or are they, they, are they using that hate as some sort of entertainment? So where maybe they can get more people to watch them, you know? Is, is it like a, is it like a, a soccer match where, oh yeah, at one point here, this team's winning, so this guy looks better because he's hating this guy more. You know, that's what it's become these days. So you can't really get, let hate get to you. You can't let it get in your heart. You can't let it get in inside your brain and go to bed with it and sit up all night thinking, oh man, that guy from social media hates me. Who cares? You don't even know the dude. You don't even know the dude. Who cares? So hate comes in all forms these days. Hate is actually entertainment these days. And you gotta understand that for what it is. You know, you gotta know going in that, hey man, we're gonna hate you, but it's all in the name of good entertainment. That's pretty much what all social media is these days, you know? Hey, look at that guy, he's got a booger hanging from him. And not laughing with him anymore, we're laughing at the dude now. Hey, that's funny. And people push it to extremes, you know? The one guy who went out into the forest with the dead people hanging in the trees, you know? People push it. They push it. Um, some don't call it hate, you know? Some call it, what do they call it? They call it all kinds of things. They call it entertainment. They call it, you know, journalism sometimes. I have a lot of, I have a lot of friends on social media, just like everybody does, you know? I'm not saying I have a lot of friends. No, I don't have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends just like every one of you people do. And you can see that their feed goes by every day, and you can see all the hate that goes by every day with, you know, it could be the girl you went to school with. He's like, oh, the bitch is over there in another town. I'm going to get them. And, or it, it, whatever. It may. It's all childish. It just goes by every single day. So we see it so much. It's not even really hate anymore. It shouldn't really even affect you when somebody says something about you. And uh, that was basically my point um, of this whole thing. It shouldn't really, it shouldn't really affect you. Let's just use my examples in the past week, okay? I've had a couple, a couple videos that were made, directed towards me, and it happens all the time. Actually, last week I had a uh, week or two, I had an essay written against me. Um, it happens all the time. And so if anybody can talk about hate being directed towards them, it's me. I sure can. Because not only did people make a video about me for YouTube, they made one for television and then put it on YouTube and then put it on their webpage and then put it on. So I know what hate directed at you is all about. So let's use my examples from me this week of some of the hate that I've got from social media and from television. Have you ever got hate right directly from television? You're sitting on your own couch and you're watching TV and all of a sudden, hey, we hate you. No, you have to turn on Facebook to get it. I get it just sitting there watching TV. But anyway, let's talk about that. I'll direct you down here in the description to where you can go watch the video that they posted on their website and the video that's on YouTube. I'll post them both there. So if maybe, I don't know, maybe some other country can't get their website or something, you can get the one on YouTube. But some of the video that they posted the program was on just the other night. I can't remember what night it was on. It was two nights ago or something. It was on uh, about here in the West Coast. It was 7 o'clock at night, I believe. Yeah, it was on at 7 o'clock. It was the second story on Ashley Banfield. Um, they had a guest host that night. His name was Brian something. I can't recall it right now. And it was a story after Como. Como's now with their network and they're all glad and shit and they're all happy. And then it comes into me. And then after mine is Britney Spears. So that's how this pro program works. You know, it's a bunch of different stories about a bunch of different things. And on their website, that's down in the description, um, 
and also their YouTube video that's in the description, both of them, they only show part of the show. There was other parts of the show that they didn't show. And here is how the show opened up. And this is one that's not on their website or on their webpage. So this is how the show opens. John versus Pen Pal, the only two people left standing in the battle for Charles Manson's fortune. Yes, Charles Manson, satanic murderer, long dead, maybe worth millions of dollars. The lawyer for one of his would-be hot hairs joins me tonight. Don Henley, in his song, talks about the bubble-headed bleach blonde who comes on at nine, who can talk about the plane crash with a gleam in her eye. That's what this shit is, man. It's dirty laundry. It's, it, it, it doesn't come across like that in, you know, because first off, here's how you get on a program like that. First thing, you got to be despicable. Some of you people out there ain't despicable enough. You just got to get more despicable. First off, be despicable. And then they come looking for you. And if you are despicable, you better turn off all your social media where they can't get a hold of your own pictures because they'll steal them. And they'll steal the worst ones, too, and they'll put them up. So if they can't steal your pictures, they'll go to the next best thing is the people who you sold pictures to, which is all these news people who come and take the pictures. Now they own the pictures, so then they go to those people and they buy the pictures. Hey, man, can we buy some despicable pictures of a despicable guy from you? And they're like, hell yeah, that's why we took these despicable pictures of this despicable guy is because we wanted to sell them to you. So they do that, and then they still use your pictures in it anyway. That's how I showed up in a lot of things. I showed up in, in, in Jason's stupid funeral film because they went and they bought some despicable pictures from a despicable guy who is now working on this despicable film with these despicable clowns. Um, and here I am in it. But that's how that works. You know, if they want you bad enough, they'll put you in it anyway. You don't have no way. Of, all you can say is yes or no. And when you say no, they'll do it anyway. They'll just do it anyway. And you won't have your opinion won't be included. So here's how it all starts. Is court happens and the court system is so fucked up right now that they just, the judge was, we were waiting on a ruling from the judge for an order whether this Jason guy is the grandson or not or whatever, if he believes it or what have you. It's all, it's, to, before, it's just totally messed up. The whole thing's messed up. The whole, everything. The whole, that whole thing is, to me, there's nothing soft there. But anyway, we were waiting for a ruling from the judge, and the judge is like, okay, whatever, dude's the grandson, don't give a fuck, really. That's how the court operates anyway. They don't give a shit about nothing. They don't care. You got to pull teeth at the place to get anything done. And, okay, he's this. But first I got to wait for, you know, another damn birth certificate that makes no damn sense. All right, so that's the point we're at. And the court happens, and we don't show up to court. We're not there that day. Well, that day, Nancy, the other person that's in the court, the sister of Charles Manson, her stepsister, or I don't know, wicked stepsister, I don't know what the hell she is either, I don't know. Like, again, I don't know who these people are, I'm not saying who they are, who they ain't are, they can come and tell me who they are themselves. They know better who they are than I do. She was saying she was a stepsister of Manson's, okay. She dropped out of the case when, they, you know, in the last hearing. We're not there. We don't show. We're a no-show. So Jason, he's like, ah, I won. I won for Jesus. He's here. We got a stage. We're going to do shit for kids. So all you one or two Facebook followers of mine, let's get this done. That is, so then immediately the news all starts calling. Why didn't you show? Are you quitting? Are you dropping out? Well, guy a couple weeks ago who wrote an essay and asked me a bunch of legal questions and shit that I can't answer. I can't answer these legal questions that this Manson family clown who thinks he's some author has for me. So I'm like, okay, all this crap keeps building up and building up and building up. So why don't I just get my lawyer to answer these questions? And now all these people were contacting you. Just pick and choose which one you want to do it on. Which one you got TV? We'll be on TV if you want, you know? Which one you got TV? So, chose to talk to the Los Angeles Times, chose to talk to these people at Ashley Banfield. 
Rest of the people, eh, next time. Don't be more despicable. Things come along. Just wait. You can come back. That's how this works. It's dirty laundry, man. That's all it is. It's dirty laundry. It's entertainment. And sometimes, you know, it's entertainment for entertainment value for a purpose, I suppose. Because all these people were attacking you. Okay. They now, like I said, Ashley Banfield, they sent me the email message. It was in Facebook. It was on Facebook messages by people that aren't your friends. You know, it's at the very top. Get a bunch of those all the time. Um, from people that aren't your friends, so I look, and it's the same old, same old masquerade that they always tell. Hi, I'm an intern with the Ashley Banfield Show. We're highest rated show in the nation for da da, and we love you. We'd love to have you on, and you can tell your complete story without interruptions, any of that, because you know what? We believe in you. You're our man. So, okay, you read all that, and you're like, oh, wow, they like me. Uh, no. You're the one that loves television. Television hates you. So when you get the television, it's it's like this. It's like this. I've seen it. I've seen it many a times now. Let's let's go back to the court hallway at the courtroom. I'm down there. I'm down there, and all these news reporters are around. They're like, hey, how are you? yeah, you're from Ohio. Wow, you're a Buckeye fan. I'm a Buckeye fan too. That's great. Hey, can you go on TV with us? Sure, man. Why not? We're both Buckeye fans. All right, get ready. Three, two, one. So, despicable motherfucker, why are you friends with Manson again? That's how it works. And then, lights go out, and he's like, hey, remember when the Buckeyes beat the... You know what? It, it, you just got to de deal with that sort of thing. And that's kind of what life's like, too. You know, if somebody says something in the Facebook feed one day, they might have been pissed at you that day. They'll get over it, and it's nothing personal to you, so I don't really take none of the stuff personal that they say on TV either. Even when they go into, you know, talking about maybe blood money. Blood money? Isn't that ironic? Blood money. You wrote me a Facebook message. Knowing goddamn well in your mind I'm already a despicable person. Want to get me on your show to point me out as blood money. When you people run shows about John Benet Ramsey and she's been dead for 20 years and you did one of them, I seen it. And, and you want to talk blood money? You came to me knowing that I'm blood money. So that you could put me on the TV to make, what, more blood money? Or what, we're laundering blood money. That's what we do. That's why we call it dirty laundry. Because we launder that shit into, oh, hey, I'm the good guy here on this side of the screen. That guy over there, don't believe him. And if you do believe him, we got two more guests coming up next that totally disregard his ass too. So hang on. And again, they don't post all the things that they had online. And this is another portion of the show that they don't have online that they now, you can see here, right here, right now. And they don't show me any love either. These people don't like me either, and they don't even know me. They don't know anything about the case. They're acting like lawyers, like they know some legal shit. And me being sitting in the courtroom, some of the stuff that they're saying don't even make sense. Um, so they get, they get they like, hey man, here, and here's how they get these people on there. They do the same Facebook message to them. It's like, hey man, you're our expert. Why don't you come in here? We, we can't pay you shit, you know, because we're not making shit here for this, you know. This is just like, this is free shit, the whole world, you know. You know how that works, free shit. Um, we're not making shit, so we can't pay you shit, but we want to put you on TV, and you're going to be the expert, and we got a despicable motherfucker here, and here's the questions to this despicable motherfucker, and we want you to answer them, and remember, you're on this side, you're not on his, so you answer them towards this way, lean in this way, and... And, you know, you'll get all kinds of props because you'll be on TV. But again, we can't pay you any money. All right. And, and oh, yeah, you got to sign a contract because we own everything, your face, everything you say. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, anyway, here's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. 
those people that they bring in next. People know a lot about the Manson estate and what it could be worth uh, to whoever inherits it. Mary Jacob is the real estate reporter for the New York Post, and Andy uh, Mayoris is an attorney and the author of the book Trial and Heirs, Famous Fortune uh, Fights. Andy, I want to start with you. We've heard estimates that this uh, estate worth $400,000, could be even more, some even say a million, but it seems to me the publishing and image rights, again, it's disturbing, but people have fascinations with these psychos, though those rights could be even worth more than the cash, couldn't they? Oh, absolutely. The cash is really a very, very small part of this estate. And it's really the music royalties, along with the image rights, that could really drive the value of this estate, especially when you look at the fact that Quentin Tarantino's movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, from a couple years ago heavily featured Charles Manson's uh, song that he wrote that was later recorded by Guns N' Roses. So the royalties from that alone could be easily hundreds of thousands of dollars. And Brian, I really have to applaud you for, for pressing uh, uh, Channel's lawyer about going after that money because, you know, it is blood money and there could end up being a lot of it. Yeah, something about the whole thing I make I think would make anyone uncomfortable. I mean, this guy is responsible for people's deaths, and now you've got people trying to, to get rich off of it. But as I mentioned, people have this weird fascination. Uh, Mary, do you think there's still enough interest in, in Manson now in 2022 to actually make his image that profitable? I and mean, with the younger generation, do they really care about Manson anymore? Um, well, I mean, if there's one thing history has shown us, uh, Americans and their fascination with the kind of the grizzly. So you have the popular murder documentaries, you have the murder trials, uh, films, uh, the, the Manson-based film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, as you mentioned. Um, so there's definitely a profit to be made here, um, up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. He, even aside from like his Beach Boys catalog, um, he wrote over a hundred songs in prison alone that people would want to dissect just uh, just on its own. So uh, there's definitely interest there and uh, the American people have kind of proven that time and time again. And Andy, you heard Mary talking there about profit. It all comes back to profit. Um, isn't there some kind of rule that a killer can't make money off of a crime like this? Isn't there a way that this money could go back to victims or to some kind of charity to help other people so that we don't have to keep using this word profit? Yeah, well, it's a fairly complicated legal uh, uh, process in order to stop that from happening. And unfortunately, most likely the time for that has long passed. There is only one victim's uh, family who actually brought a wrongful death lawsuit against Charles Manson and did collect a substantial judgment. And that did lead to the, that family recovering some money in the past. But judgments have to be renewed every 10 years. And we're talking now over 50 years. And the other families did not bring suit. So right now, there's no outstanding judgments to be collected upon. So all the money, all the profit goes into Charles Manson's estate. And from there to whichever of these two battling heirs ends up winning. And it is a battle. Okay, I'm going to ask both of you this, but I want to start with you, Mary. How do you think this plays out? Do you think the pen pal will win in the end, or do you think it's going to be the, the grandson? Uh, well, last month there was a ruling acknowledging that Jason Freeman is Manson's grandson. And as long as the court continues to recognize him as such, he is likely going to be the full beneficiary of Manson's estate. Um, and I don't see that changing as of right now. Um, I mean, Mr. Lyon's client, Michael Channel, because he was not in the room and directly handed the will by Manson, there is a law in California that states that there would be a doubt that Manson even signed it. It would be hard to prove without a doubt that Manson was the one to have signed that will. Uh, so that already makes it fairly difficult for channel. What do you think, Andy? Uh, pen pal or grandson winning in the yep. end? 
Yeah, I actually agree with Mary because the uh, probate laws of various states, including California, have certain formalities that have to be followed for a will to be valid. And a will like this would normally require the signature of two witnesses, not one. And here, as Channel's lawyer just uh, confirmed, only one witness signed it, which that puts the burden of proof on Channel's to prove by clear and convincing evidence that this will is a valid will. And as Mary said, he wasn't there. He was presented it after the fact. He can't take the court the stand and test how this will was created. So how is he going to meet that burden of proof? So I agree with you, Mary. I think there's a good chance that the grandson's going to prevail here. Mary, we obviously heard about the pen pal through the attorney who was just on and had this fascination and was writing uh, Manson in, 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 in jail for so many years. But what do we know about the grandson? Has he said at all what his intentions would be with, with the money, Mary? Um, he hasn't really made it known exactly what he wants to do with the money. I find that fascinating considered that his own father took his own life because well, we don't have full proof of this, but it's leaning towards the fact that he was associated with Manson, Manson and that his father was Charles Manson. So his own father took his own life because of his affiliation with the Manson family murders. So the fact that his son, who, by the way, changed his name uh, also to not be associated with Manson, now wants to be involved in his estate for profit reasons, I would assume, um, is, you know, quite disconcerting. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Changed the name until he wanted to go after the money. Uh, exactly. Listen, very, very interesting. It's going to be interesting to watch how it plays out. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this money will be going to help any of the victims. Uh, Mary Jacob and Andy uh, Mayoris, thank you both so much for coming on tonight. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, so if you're asking yourself, how do I get on a television show like that? Well, I can tell you. I can tell you how to do it. First thing you got to do is you got to be despicable. That's the first thing. And since Manson's despicable, and I'm a friend of his, that makes me despicable too, so gets me on the show. So the guests come in, and they give you their two cents worth. It really, like I said, means nothing. Because if you listen to them, they're talking like attorneys. They're talking like attorneys. And that's a bad move when you act like, oh, you know some sort of something about the law. Because you don't, man. I've sat in court long enough to tell you right now, judges don't even know about the law in there. They have to go look it up. So these people, they're on TV parading around like they know the law in these programs. They don't know the law. They might have gave them a question or two ahead of time so they could look it up maybe, but half these people don't look it up anyway. They're only going on TV for that two minutes of fame so that they can get noticed because they're not getting paid and they're not looking up any law. So these people come on TV, act like they're lawyers, act like they're whatever they are, and say their piece and they get their time they can now throw it on their social media page like hey man did you see me on Ashley Banfield talking about that despicable dude well the despicable dude is what you need to be that's the first thing you need to be to get on TV despicable dude remember that it gets you on TV every single time just watch watch TV that's so all it's on there. It leads the news every night. And if there's some despicable dude that's in a car chase, bam, they'll break to it, man. Hey, we got a despicable dude in a car chase. Yep, that's us, them people, you know? That's the first way to get on television and how they get you on television. And when if you're despicable enough, you'll have a bunch of people to choose from to get on television. So for the guy that had the essay that wanted to know all the lawyer questions, go down into the description and you can find all those questions right down there, my man. And now, had another video. Not just television and them then taking it from television. 15 minutes, took them 15 minutes after that program was over with to have it on YouTube. 15 minutes, it was on YouTube. So they were quick about that, too. And then from that time, it took them like another, you know, few hours to have it on their webpage with a whole write-up about it, with a whole video on, you know, and still it doesn't have the whole video. So you're getting to see the how the show started here and basically how the show ended here. And then they show the middle with, you know, my attorney, which you've got to see down in the comments, because I'm not going to play that here. They're, they're playing it enough on YouTube themselves. And now to a YouTube video that goes into a lot of hate about me that I just cannot even understand. 
And we'll talk about that next, right now. I gotta go take a leak. So hang on, Jason. I'll be right back. When people will have an opinion of me, I don't really care. Again, I don't really care. I don't care. Sometimes other people do. Sometimes other people tell me, hey man, dude's got videos saying shit about you. I don't care. Well, I don't care. I'm gonna lose no sleep over him. I don't care. But now he's up to like something like six videos, and they're pretty much all fucking hate towards me. Somewhere along the line, he gets a dig in for Jesus Christ. You know, uh, fuck that channel guy. Thank you, God. God bless America. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It don't make any sense to me. So he's on some Christian program, and I'm not going to put the links down here. You can look for him. But he's got like six videos where this Christian guy, I don't know who he is either. He's trying to talk all Christian with Jason and Jason's talking a bunch of bullshit and nobody listens and nobody looks and nobody subscribes and nobody cares. Nobody cares, Jason. So why don't you just stop making all those videos? Nobody cares. Do something else, man. Do fishing videos. Do chimney videos like it was done. At least two people looked at those, you know? You know? Nobody cares. But anyway, he's making a bunch of hate videos. And he's make, propping himself up videos and all these things he's going to do for Christ when when Charles Manson gives him the chance to do it. Why don't you just go th do things for Christ now? Why haven't you been doing things for Christ then? You know, you talk so bright and all this bullshit. To me, sometimes you look like you're drunk. Sometimes you look like you're high. Sometimes if you're not, you should. Maybe you should smoke a joint, man. Calm down. Calm down. Now he's got this video, now he's on YouTube again. He's Jason Lee Freeman, like they used to say on Walton's. Good night, Jason Lee. He's Jason Lee Freeman, you can go look him up. Now he's got a hate video there, and he's talking a bunch of shit there too. That's like, why don't you just shut up? Nobody believes you, and now you want me to respond to you. So okay, I'll respond to you. First, it's most of the things that you talk about in there, you don't even know what the hell you're talking about. One of the, you got a bunch of people that are, oh, okay, they'll talk, they'll, they're against me, and you got inmates and people that are on the outside. I probably know all the damn people on the outside. I've seen that you have George Simpson on the paperwork, so if he shows up, good, good. Let him show up. I got a lot more tapes of Manson talking shit about that guy. Let him show up. Bring him on down. Then you say you got inmates. Oh, those are the most reliable people in the world. Bring them on down. Bring, they're, just, they're there to fucking make a show for themselves. They're going to make a clown, more of a clown show because you're already a clown show. Make a clown show out of you is all they're going to do. So bring all the inmates. Bring all Corcoran. I don't care. Fill up the whole courtroom with them. I don't care. Bring all Manson's old Atwa buddies and my me's. I don't care. Let's have a party there. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me who you're going to bring or what you got or what you're going to do for the Lord. Stop telling me about me. You don't know shit about me, dude. You keep calling me a liar and a fraud. You say, now you say I'm a forger. Like again, I got a video way back that was telling people, when people tell you about you, when I decide, hey, me, Michael, I'm going to tell you all about Jason. I know everything about him. I don't know anything about the guy, really. Only thing I know about the guy is the, the interactions that we've had together, which was only one. And then he lied about that on the videos with this little Christian guy. Okay, I'll get into that. That's, that's the first lie that I heard you tell, Jason, amongst the millions of other ones. But this is one that I can prove, and you know damn well it's true. Okay, I get to the courthouse for the very first time. Very first time. The very, 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 very very first court case. I couldn't get a lawyer. I tried my ass off to get a lawyer on the telephone. Called about 50 of them. Every time you mentioned, yeah, Charles Manson, bam, they hung up the phone. They don't want nothing to do with Manson. And I could understand that. So I just moved on to the next, and the next, and the next. I couldn't find one. What do you do next? I go in there by myself, you know? What did Jason do? First, he started a GoFundMe page to go, I'm going to bury my grandfather in a respectable way. GoFundMe told him to go fuck himself. Look it up. It's in the, I don't have it in the description. I ain't describing all that shit. He went to GoFundMe to try to get them to bury his dad. 
They told him to go fuck himself in a statement, basically. We ain't fucking burying that fucking creep. That's what they said. And they took him off of the platform. In the process of that, he had a little bunch of little punk ass friends that were sucking on each of his tits. One of them was the guy that's like uh, molested Manson in the fucking death video in his casket. And that was the first time dude ever met him. Acting like they were good buddies for the longest period of time. That dude never met Manson before. Ever. In his life. And he's all, he's fucking French kissing him right there in the casket. I bet you was feeling him up too. I don't think they showed that part, but I bet you had his hand right on his balls too. But he had those guys push him, and all of a sudden, Zach Baggins started funding Jason Freeman's damn court. Jason Freeman, he, he lies his ass off. This is, a, this is a, uh, okay, I was going to tell about one lie, now I found out another lie. Basically, I've talked myself into talking about one of these other lies that I heard him say. Okay, he says, oh, I've been taking care of this court all myself. Bullshit, Jason. First, you went to GoFundMe. They told you to go fuck yourself. Then, your little buddies uh, that you were running around with at the time, the guy that molested Manson in the casket, and the little Indian dude who, I don't know what, he's a uh, homo Indian or what he is, them little guys that you were hanging out with, you know, the little rapist guy that went to, the, you know, all those people, they attracted the attention of Zach Baggins. Zach Baggins is like, yeah, we got the grandson, we got Manson, he'll give us everything, we know he will. Zach Baggins is way smarter than you. He suckered you out of everything. He took, you talk about all the, sh all, how creepy I am. You took Charles Manson's body and divvied it up in pieces, put it inside of a funeral program, taped it to it, his dead body, ashes, signed your damn name, and then Freebird, and all that shit to it, and sold it to people. Zach Baggins made that possible for you, because he's paying for these lawyers of yours. That's why these lawyers of yours don't really like you as a person. You know that the first time that Jason shows up, okay, I'm, we're talk, I was back, let me get back to talking about the first time I showed up to court. Okay, I don't have any lawyers. Jason's got two lawyers now from Zach Baggins. You know, he's all, ha oh, ha, I'm Jason Freeman, the fucking grandson, sitting there in the middle of all these reporters and shit. I'm walking down the hall. I don't have any fucking attorneys, you know, um, and I'm going to meet the ones that I finally got. I'm trying to get them on the phone. The phone don't work in the court building at all, and it, the messages ain't going through. I'm just getting more nervous and more nervous, and the one message that does come through from the attorney that I've never met before, that I've just got, I'm trying to meet in this courthouse, is telling me to meet him on the fifth floor. I'm on the third floor in the courthouse and the stairs come to an end. There's no more fifth floor. So I oh, look on the sign, you gotta walk all the way down the hallway and there's like three more floors up the other side. That's the craziest thing, but that's how the courthouse works down there. So now as I'm rushing to meet them because I'm, I'm the phone wasn't working, I don't know where I'm at, the floors aren't all adding up. He's outside smoking on the balcony and on the fifth floor and there ain't no fifth floor and, and finally it comes through, okay, uh, now I gotta walk down the hall. So I'm walking down the hall and I'm looking at my phone and all of a sudden it's Michael Channels! Freeman jumps up from the side, comes rushing over towards me. I don't know what the fuck he's gonna do to me. He's some ultimate wrestler guy. Fucking kill my ass. He ain't doing that to me. So I jump back. He's like, sticks his hand out like he wants to shake my hand. I'm like, no, I ain't shaking your hand, man. You're just making a show in front of all these reporters is all you're doing. That's all you're doing. And I'm still looking at my phone because I need to find these attorneys, man. I need to talk to them before this hearing, before it's the first time I ever met them. And uh, so I get out of his way and walk around him. And I'm looking at my phone and, he, and then he screams at me from behind and he says, all I wanted to do was say hi, and I went like this, still looking at my phone, still walking along, and then later on his little Christian show, he, he turns the, the wave into, I turned around and said, fuck you, Jason Freeman. Do you think I would do that in the courtroom, in the hallway of a court where I'm going for it? No, the dude's lying there, too. So that's a lie he told. When he tells that he's taking care of this his whole time all by himself, he's lying there too. Lying there too. Zach finally cut him off. Now he is taking care of it by himself. 
Sometimes he's taking care of it all by himself because some people don't even really believe him on his own side. Sometimes he's got to represent himself in court. Why is he doing that? Why, Jason? They don't believe you either, Ben. Nobody believes you. The only thing that believes you is the stupid-ass law. That's the only thing that believes you right now, you know? But there's more questions for the law, even. You know, you keep, oh, I'm Jason Freeman, I'm related to Jay White. And nobody asks any questions like, maybe we should ask questions like this. The dude that died, the dirt guy that you prop up in your first book, fighting the devil and all this bullshit, who's the devil in that? Is that Manson? You need Manson. You need him badly. Because he's this bad image that you escape from. And in your newest video, you're talking about, um, Channels is going to be a felon. He's going to be behind. The only felon, like I said, you're not talking about me, bro. Not me, bro. I'm not a felon. I'm not even a misdemeanor. I've never been in jail. I've been in a thousand jails. Never. Not voluntarily, though. You, my friend, now, to talk about felonies? We can go down your record of maybe methamphetamine. Maybe that's why your sobriety bullshit on your videos means so much to you and nobody else. Nobody believes your bullshit. And is you attacking me? Attacking me of how I'm a fraud. You lied to the judge, right to his face, right in court. I seen it happen. First off, since you weren't involved with the case because Zach Baggins hired these attorneys, you show up one day out of the blue. Remember that? You showed up out of the blue. Sat down with your lawyers, and your lawyers look at you like, who the fuck's this guy? And then you finally tell them who you are, and it's like, oh, okay, this is this dude. The, in the court right now, there's two attorneys that's representing Manson's estate. They were hired by Zach Baggins. Zach Baggins has got Jason hid back in the background. Basically, one attorney's representing Manson's estate, another attorney's representing Manson, and Jason's like, back here is nobody. So these people are really gonna own this big part of this shit when it's over with. And I bet you Zach's even still gonna part, even if Jason wins. Um, but these people here are representing him, and sometimes Jason will want to do things in court that they just don't jive with, or they don't even know about, or they've never taught. I can tell they don't even talk to each other. It's like, I got a bunch of questions, uh, but they've made this thing confusing from the very beginning because of Zach Baggins and how he arranged all this stuff from the very start. And then we get up to the point uh, you know, when the first thing happens in the newspaper that day, Jason's like, well, I'm looking like this. I'm looking at this whole case like an ultimate fight in channels. Well, I'm, he's the one I'm fighting, and I'm just going to knock his ass out in the second round. Okay, I'll take that and cut it out and put it on a billboard. It's up on the billboard. And it is, brother, because I got it in a scrapbook. So you're going to knock me out in the second round. So now you make a video of how this is drug out so long and I'm gonna be a felon. Wait, you're the felon, you're the meth head, not me. You're the one that picked on people and bullied people and they put you in jail for that too once, remember? Not me, I don't do that. I'm not a bully online. I'm here defending myself from what you said. You call me a fraud. You're a fraud, dude. What about the dude? Back to the Dirk dude in your book. The dad, my dad, my dad, my dad Dirk, my dad Dirk. That dude ever adopt you? Are you adopted? I think you are. First off, I think you're adopted. But secondly, I don't think you're Jay's son whatsoever. I think that was employed by your mother. Your mother did that. J Jay White was known as Jay White until your mom had to look his ass up and turn him into Charles Manson Jr. for her own props, her own ego, just like you're doing today, like mother, like son. She pro this, is m this is my opinion. She propped this dude up. Oh, this is Charles Manson Jr. He had my kid when he never had your mother's damn kid. You're not no part of that. She outs this guy. What's he do a few years later? <laughs> Blows his head off. Before that, he was Jay White. How did he get to be Jay White? You know, because Rosalie took off and took Charlie's kid, and she took off. She's like, fuck Charlie Manson, he ain't never getting my kid Jay back. It wasn't Jay at the time, he was little Charlie. That birth certificate that you turned in the other day, that's who he was then. But when he got back to wherever he went with, 
and Rosalie got married to a guy by the name of White, Jack White, and then Jay, it's always been rumored in books, Jay changed his name to avoid Charles Manson. How the hell did Jay do that at three years old? Was Jay adopted too, maybe, by Charles, this white guy? who now changed his name to Jay White because his name's Jack White and she's now Rosalie White? That has nothing to do with Charles Manson anymore now because that was how Michael Bruner got excluded. And if anybody's a damn relative to Charles Manson in this whole thing, Jason, you can't gloat because that guy is and you ain't. And people who hate you on the internet should just keep their damn mouth shut. So when it comes to you talking about fraud, yeah, I wonder a lot about a lot of frauds. Why didn't you take a DNA test? You blame me for dragging this out for so long. No, I can blame you for dragging this out for so long. Because if you wouldn't have denied every step in the process of them not believing you in the first place, everybody believed you at first. You were the grandson. Now you're the guy claiming to be the grandson. We didn't get here because of me. We got here because of you. First off, you lied to the judge, right to his face, told him if the court orders it, okay, the court ordered it. What do you do? You go appeal it. That's my fault. Court ordered that, not me. You can blame me all day long. You can cry the blues, man. I don't care. It doesn't have anything to do with me. You can get on there and act like you're a lawyer too and shuffle all your papers in the beginning of your video. It doesn't mean anything except you're an idiot because if you're your own lawyer, that's what you are. You know, so I kind of refrain from, you know, all the hate and the Jesus speak mixed together. It doesn't really make you look genuine, it doesn't make you look authentic, it doesn't prove a point anymore, it doesn't do anything except you make you look more like a fool. I ain't going to believe you. I don't care what you say. I don't care what anybody says to tell you the truth. I don't care if Jesus pops through the sky and says, Jason has got a stage. He is the grandson. Don't give a fuck. Fuck Jesus too. I don't care. I don't care. Doesn't matter to me what you say, what anybody says. So, if the video was to prove a point, all it did was ask more questions of me. Why didn't you take the DNA test? Why'd you lie to the judge? Why'd you lie to the preacher guy on the video about me in the hallway? You know, about stupid little shit about me in the hallway. To emphasize the point on how much that you should hate me because I turned around and said, fuck you, Jason Freeman. That's not something I would do, bro. I don't do that to anybody. I act more godly than you ever have. That's why I've been Manson's friend. Who else could be Manson's friend? Who else wants to go through the abuse like this shit all the time? You do now because you think you're going to carry bags full of money. No, this is a bag full of curses, bro. A bag full of curses. And you better know how to deal with them all. Because you've done open up the bag. I don't care if you win or lose. You still got it. You still get, It's still attached to you. It ain't going away. Just think. It's always there, bro. Always. Always, because now it's attached to you. Do you know how to deal with it? Because you don't sound like you do. I do, man. I don't care. I'll clown on these people all day long. I don't care. I don't care, because I'm genuine. Dude was my friend. I'm standing up for him. I don't care. No matter who comes out, wants to fight, Ultimate Fighter even came out now, wants to fight me, I don't care. He's my friend, I'm gonna have to do it then. I'll probably beat my ass if we're, good thing we didn't do it in a ring because you'd already won. I give you that. I'm not saying I can beat your ass. Never have I said that. You're the one that says that all the time, like it means something. Like, oh, I'll kick his ass or oh, some boxing reference or some fighting reference or some machismo reference. Like, that makes you some tough guy. Like, oh, I'd whip his ass. You just, fuck, yeah, you would, but you wouldn't because you always talk about things that your uncle, your grandfather told you. You don't know shit of what you make it up, man. You make it up, that shit that you've been putting in. My grandfather told me, oh, give him the fucking slippy sucker punch. What the fuck are you talking? You lie. You're getting your lying. He didn't tell you shit, man. He didn't tell you shit. But what he did tell me is this. In them old movies, back when, when they said, hey, I'll meet you at 12 o'clock in the middle of the street and we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a showdown, brother. We're gonna draw, 
and see who can win. Here's what your grandfather told me. He goes, I'd shoot him from the roof. <laughs> That's how I do it too. I ain't going to no damn gunfight. You're nuts, man. So I don't want to fight with you. I ain't in no fight with you. I don't look at you as a bad dude even though you've drug it out. You've drug this shit out, not me. DNA test, oh shit, grandfather. Fucking how many, four years ago? We could have done this shit four years ago. You did it, bro. You did it. Blame yourself, not me. Not to do with me. Nothing. Grandfather, yeah, sure is. You know the reason we didn't do that four years ago? Huh? Public opinion now says guy claiming to be the grandson. Because you're not it. Because you already know. Because you've already drawn the blood and you've already came up negative and you lost Final Jeopardy and you don't got no more money left and now you're not Ken Jennings no more. You already know it. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. And if you have any haters, don't let them bug you. They're only looking for attention. Most of the times they hate themselves. Most of the things that they say that you are, they are because they know it from their own life. And until next time, and there will be a next time, maybe, who knows. Peace, bro. We'll see you on down the road.